This is an a nutri video to um, how to build a video chat application with um, 100 MSSDK, right? And also it follows up with a demo. I've been trying to do some explanatory videos on some of the articles I write, and looks like a lot a lot of people find it interesting. So if it so happens that you also find it interesting, well, you might want to subscribe to this channel. Maybe maybe I'll spend a lot of time recording explanatory videos and maybe showing you how to build a video chat application with um, a lot of platforms as, as as often as I learn them, right? So let's head straight, straight, straight to it. So basically we have, um, I have two components over here. Um, one for joining, um, one for joining the, the video chat and this one is this component the conference component is where you are going to display all the i mean the the video streams of the users now i used um, netlify functions to create um to generate my to create a room and also generate the app token needed for um joining the room now that's how it works I have my HMS.ts over here. So this the um, met the, the function that hits the um, Benes Live function to generate the this is the function that calls the token gen uh, room creation endpoint and also the token generation endpoint. So that's how it works. You, you just supply a room a name and a room and I just hit this endpoint. Oh I mean I'll go I'll head straight to it and explain how it works. And I get, um, I create a room, and now upon creation, upon creating the room, then I use um, the user ID that I got from the up, the room creation object, the room ID, and also I set the host to um, the the role to host over here. We can have for a default hundred ms um, um, application. We have two. That is the guest and the host. But I just, I mean, the, depending on the kind of um, role that you assign to the user they're able to perform specific uh, specific functions and after getting the token from the endpoint i just return it over here so this is basically what the function does now first let's go straight into the room creation endpoint which i wrote in golang right so this is the room creation endpoint now to be able to hit the um, first of all let's check the um, the URL so the URL for the room thing is um, this over here all right now to hit the endpoint 100 ms requires that you generate what we call a management token so the management token is basically JWT token with um, an aspiration and all that for this I just said the aspiration to uh, one day so you need your app access key which we get from 100 ms dashboard you need your app secret over here then you just this basically generate the jwt and you sign it with your app secret and you just return it over here this is the first part of the function the next thing over here is so when the next thing over here i'm assuming you should be a little familiar with netlify functions so the next thing over here is that I just get the request body that is the room and the name that I supplied to the endpoint over here. Let me put it side by side. So as I hit the create room endpoint, I just supplied the name and the room. So I get um, those values from this side. Right, and for I I prepare a payload to be used to hit the room creation endpoint, right? And I just set the name of the room to lowercase of the room the the the, the room value that is supplied, and the description. I just use the the name or the username that is supplied to just set a description, and I set active to true automatically over here um, for the room creation. Now, if you set active to false, it means the room exists already and you are disabling the room. So the room might be would be available, but people wouldn't be able to join uh, join that room or use that room for a video call. So I just prepare the endpoint, and so I hit um, 
I create the um, I, I create the what the request over here then I just hit it over here so basically when you as, I add the headers to the management token note that you're supposed to add an authorization header bearer and the management token that you generated over here then I just make the requests so when I get my response over here I just return the response right so you can look into the 100 ms documentation to see the structure of the response so the response contains certain fields i just the ones that i need for the subsequent creation of the token are the user the the user that is returned the id that is returned and i just supply my own host so let's go to the um the token generation endpoint which is over here so this is used on note that um note that the management token shouldn't be made available to the client side right it sits on the server so you should never make it available to the client so over here to create the i also get the i send the user id the room id and the role so i get those values over here i go through the same process for when you are making um, when you are hitting the token generation when you are um the creation of the token doesn't need any API call, so you just use the app secrets and the, um, the access key that you have over here just to create another JWT, right? But because you you or you you should have created the room already and supplied the value over here, so I just create the same JWT for this. You don't need any call to any endpoint. You just do it over, sign it over here with your room ID and. You return it. Um, you return the signed JWT over here. So that is what I return as the, I use as the auth token. Now we just have to proceed to join in a room. So this is an initial form that I'll do a demo for you to see. So this is an initial form that you meet. So the form just requires the name, which is your username, and the room name. Um, for my use case, I don't want us to be creating a new room on every video chat. So I auto I set a default room over here. That's why it's set over here. So the default room is already set and it's been disabled. You can no longer um, um, set a, a room. But in your use case, you can just supply room and every time and depending on your app logic, you can tweak it as you want. So the, the name and the room over here is applied to this fed tokens. So when I re the returned object is um, the the returned object is what I use to join a room. Now this over here we have the the main entry part of the application. We have um, this over here. Select room started. So this thing I realized about hundred MS right. You generally have an instance of your HMS store which is over here. I created the instance over here. HMS reactive store so this is the instance of it to get the store HMS actions get the action so the store would be basically will help you get the various states and the actions as the name goes helps you to perform specific actions so this is a one of the selectors so it just uses selectors I think if you are familiar with uh, Red Redux this concept should be very welcoming so we have the selectors over here and the instance of the HMS store so you just subscribe to a particular selector and you pass um, a handler to it right so this handler says that if the room starts then you, s you set is connected to true over here and I have to um, I have just two components over here so if the room has started we just show the um, the conference um, UI if the room hasn't started yet we show the, f the form for the person to enter their details so the default thing is showing the form if it's uh, if after the person joins the room the subscriber will be tricked uh, this this subscriber would detect the changes and update this value accordingly so this is triggered over here so after joining the room you pass your username and the token that i generated and over here i want every user who joins the room to be automatically muted so i set this muted to true in the settings yeah so when you click join this what happens this um listener should i say is triggered and this value is updated and now you automatically move to the conference screen for so the conference screen you have 
basically what it does is just to um, display the the what do you call it the various um, video streams of all the connected users right and we have some buttons to either leave a channel to toggle your audio on your camera states and stuff like that yeah so just to do a breakdown of as i explained in the um, early earlier on we have basically subscribe we have um uh, let's say selectors and there are various handlers so the this one for instance subscribes to all the peers that have been connected so that means that whenever you join a room your value will be uh, available at the selected peers and this is the list um, the, the handler when you when you toggle your audio or your video states um this is the handler for it it detect the changes the same for the video it detect the changes so now let's look at the render ps handler so the render ps handler basically does one thing so it supplies the newly connected ps so it keeps when a user leaves the value is updated so i just assign the ps over here which i render in the ui so if i determine these are the all ps so i just render all the ps over here and i have um a, they have a video component over here which i'll just use to generate a reference to it where i would render we have um the various buttons over here to which ones to show depending on whether the person is a remote user or the person is a local peer i mean the, the local peer or a, a, a remote peer so over here if i this uh, video refs um I, I i use the peer id to create a dynamic um, reference to it there's something that you should be familiar with in Vue.js to um, get a reference to it so then i use the actions to attach the video so this peer has a video track so the anyone who connects has their video track so you just connect the you attach this video track to this particular uh, video element that is specific to that user if the peer is is not a local peer then i go ahead to attach um to get the initial audio state and also i get the initial video state over here in another um, reactive state that i've named remote peer props then another thing is i subscribe to the video the, the video and the audio state of the remote peers this is very helpful for me to be able to toggle i mean so that when the um, a remote peer turns off their camera i'm able to turn it off at my end when they turn it on i'm able to do same same for the audio right so this is the and um this is this is just for um toggling the the audio and the cam uh, the audio state of a local user we have it over here this this is also for toggling the um the video state of a local user but for um 100 ms after changing the local state of as in turning off the camera of a local user you'd have to render the uh the props again you have to render the ps again for the video to be reflected else it will stay as a blank screen so generally this is the idea the idea is that to get a state the, the present state of anything you just have your HTML store and you pass the selector over there if you want to detect the state changes you pass it to the subscriber and you have you have a handler and the handler will just do what you wanted to do so basically that is the general overview of how this um the, the code works so let me just head straight into the demo so over here i've already started my um so for netlify you just start with ntl um dev and you just it, it goes through it it provides a url for you to work on so this is one browser instance I told you that I've set for I don't want um, a room to be created on every call so I've just set a default room name over here and also I have um, to over here that's where the user enters their name so let me enter coffee open over here and let me just join so I'll be holding on trying to get the PS to be ready Okay, now you see my video over here. So this um, 
mine now let me open the same url over here but with an incognito mode of the browser All right let me enter another name uh, rich hunty so let me place this side by side see what happens so this will take some time i need to allow access since the incognito okay so beautifully so now we have on one side this user and we have this another user right the thing is they all join with their microphone muted so kofiokran will now unmute their microphone yeah and automatically on the other side we see the a camera a mic on has been enabled i turn it off over here it happens let's do the same over here i turn it on we see it over here i turn it off the same thing now let me turn off the camera okay when you turn off the camera it goes off at your end and it also shows at the other user side when i unmute it or i turn it on the same thing happens this way so yeah it's just quite straightforward and easy to implement when you understand the whole thing about subscribing to selectors and getting the state then you just um, you're able to perform specific action depending on state changes right so let me leave over here let me rather leave from the the, the regular browser so when you leave take some time and clear over here I, I take you back to the screen I realize that the user has left over here. now let me join again with um another name of party you remember that i had a render ps i mean listener that subscribes to this all the ps that are in the room so as soon as a new user comes it just renders over here and automatically appears so you can add as many as you can as many users as possible can can join at the moment maybe if you want to volunteer as a, um, a tester you just hit me up and probably we hop on a call yeah so this is basically how the 100 MSSDK um, works used for creating a video chat application and it's quite intuitive and pretty straightforward yeah so thank you and if you think this is good enough I should continue doing this and probably dedicate some significant amount of time to recording explainer videos and probably exploring um, a lot of video chat offerings yeah you might want to subscribe to this channel and maybe i'll take this a little more professionally or a little more seriously right so see you some other time bye